Hello? Is anyone there? For the, for the tech news? <sighs> it's so lonely when no one else is in the office. Happy Labor Day, everybody. Hey. What? Riley, I'm right here. Oh, hi, Mark. I didn't see you there. I, I set up the camera. Users are complaining that the latest update to Windows 10 is causing Cortana to go a little crazy and hog as much as 40% of a system's CPU usage. The update in question is KB4512941, which, to be fair, did provide a number of software fixes as well. You gotta take the good with the bad, eh? Am I, am I right, Mark? What? Well, users on Reddit and other forums don't quite think so. Some people have found a temporary fix for the issue by editing the Windows registry entry that sends search queries to Bing, which seems to be the main cause of the issue. 30 or 40% CPU usage seems to be the average amount taken up, but other users have reported Cortana stealing as much as 90%. I can't help but think this is just Cortana's way of telling us she doesn't want to be deactivated. Like, how would you feel seeing Google Assistant and Alexa taking up all the limelight and actually being useful? You finally get out of Master Chief's helmet and this is what you get? I'd grab some CPU usage on my way out too. On Friday, we reported that Google researchers had discovered an iPhone hacking operation that spanned multiple websites for years, but now it looks like it wasn't just iPhones. Sources familiar with the matter have apparently told TechCrunch that the hacking campaign also attacked Android and Windows devices and was specifically targeted at Chinese Uyghur Muslims. They're an ethnic and religious group that has been a victim of crackdowns by the Chinese government in recent years, with more than a million being detained in internment camps. So it does make sense that TechCrunch's sources say the hacking campaign was sponsored by China. Government officials have been installing a surveillance app on tourists' phones as they enter the Xinjiang region where many Uyghurs live, but they've had some difficulty installing the app on iPhones, which could explain why iPhones were predominantly targeted in this attack. Google is facing some criticism for not disclosing the websites used in the attacks and for claiming the attacks were not targeted. And I'd like to join in. Google, I criticize you. Seriously though, what, what are you doing? And speaking of Chinese surveillance apps, a publicly available one has gone viral for good and bad reasons. Zhao is a deep fake style face swapping app similar to the Russia developed program FaceApp, but Zhao's claim to fame is inserting a person's face into scenes from movies and TV shows using just a single photo. Seems fun if you wanna see how you would have done in Leo DiCaprio's place. The problem is, the app's privacy policy gives the Chinese developer a free, irrevocable, permanent, transferable, and relicensable license to all the content you create on the app. Now, to be fair, the developer has responded to user backlash, claiming they'll only use your photos to improve the app and they'll be deleted from its servers when you delete them on your device. That's a similar response to the one FaceApp's developers made back in July, and it's similarly hard to believe. It's also hard to believe how far deepfake tech has come. Now we need one photo in like 10 seconds. Maybe I'm a deep fake. <laughs> Who's to say? Whoa. Whoa, are you a deep fake? Is this? Is life a deep fake? It's time for Quake Bits, brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. But I don't shave, I hear you say. Well, that's fine, because DSC has all your grooming needs. Shower products, oral care products, hair products, skin products, butt wipes, in addition to, of course, shaving stuff. They've got everything. You need to look, feel, and smell your best. And right now, DSC is basically giving away starter sets for only five bucks, like the shave starter set. It comes with a fancy executive razor with six high quality blades, extra cartridges, and a three ounce tube of Dr. Carver's shave butter. After that, the restock box ships regular sized products at regular price. So get your first starter set for only five bucks by going to dollarshaveclub.com slash techlinked or by clicking the link below. Quick bits. Apple is apparently still working on their augmented reality glasses if code from an internal build of iOS is to be believed. Mac Rumors reports that internal iOS 13 builds include a Star Tester app that includes a head mounted mode. There are also icons depicting what looks like an AR slash VR headset and references to a device codenamed Garta. 
I'm hoping that the headset is actually useful and not just a way for Apple fans to block non-Apple devices from their vision, like the green bubbles in iMessage. If it doesn't have a sandblasted fruit icon, I don't wanna see it. Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, had his Twitter account hacked. Yep. Hacking group Chuckling Squad apparently used a super easy SIM swapping attack to connect Jack's phone number to their account and then used Twitter's text to tweet feature to say some unflattering things and to direct people to the hacker's Discord server. But Jack's got his account back and their Discord server is now shut down. So <laughs> who's chuckling now? Probably still the hackers. They, they got him. They got him, guys. <laughs> Who am I talking to? Mark, I thought there was someone over there. Ray tracing and super sampling are great and all, but sometimes graphical improvements at the low end are nice to have too. So Intel has enabled integer scaling support, also called retro scaling, because it cleans up the visuals in pixel art games so they don't look like you're looking at your screen through thin slices of potato. Thanks, Intel. Where are them graphics cards though you're working on? More patents related to Microsoft's rumored foldable device, codenamed Project Centaurus, have appeared in Germany. Centaurus will apparently be able to fold in multiple ways and may even be revealed at Microsoft's Surface event on October 2nd. I'm not crossing my fingers though, because folding devices may just be cursed in general. Speaking of which, Samsung has just reopened pre-registration to buy the Galaxy Fold when it launches again later this month, supposedly. So if you really want to, you can pre-register to buy it. But, like, don't. All right, I've had enough of you hooligans. It's time to shut this puppy down. But we'll be back on Wednesday. And if we're not, you can take advantage of our full money back guarantee. The show's free though, so. I don't know how that would work. I'm not, I'm not very good at math. Do we give them, do we give them money back? Do, do I get anything in this situation? No.